So hi Nell, I'm Sarah from The Upcoming. Such a pleasure to speak to you. How are you doing today, all right? It's a pleasure also. But, uh, yeah, I'm fine, thank you. How are you? I'm great. Um, I absolutely loved this, this film, really unique and, you know, a very British drama in, in lots of respects. So, but maybe you could just kick off with a brief introduction for people who don't already know anything about the film. Um, how would you give a brief synopsis about what it's all about, Sweetheart? Um, a very brief synopsis, I would say Sweetheart is a lesbian coming of age uh, love story uh, set on a very British holiday park. Um, it's a very joyous, uplifting um, story. And yeah, we're all super proud of it. <laughs> and obviously it's your kind of first leading role um, in a film. So what was it about this script, um, working with Marley Morrison, that attracted you to, to playing this role? Um, I think the first thing was like Marley's writing, um, which is just so good. And obviously good dialogue makes your actor, your, sorry, your job as an actor, you know, much smoother. Um, <laughs> um, so I think that was the, the first thing. And I think actually like AJ as a character, the way that she's written, um, the way that Marley put her on the page, I think it, it, it was a bit of a challenge. I, I thought, I, you know, it was kind of a, she was a bit of a mystery to me. And I think I wanted to give it a go. <laughs> and because it kind of, it's rooted, isn't it? And I think some of experience, experiences Marley had as a youngster and kind of coming of age and coming to terms with her identity. So I guess there was something very personal about this character for her. So what was it like for you trying to kind of get under the skin of it? Um, and, you know, on some respects, maybe it was quite fun playing like the moody teenage role, but then there's a lot more going on there, isn't there, than just what meets the eye? Um, yeah, that's a good question. Um, I think that, I think it was great because obviously it's not a sort of, um, autobiographical piece, but very a lot of AJ is, is in Mali. So I think it was actually really useful because you just had this like constant continuous channel between me and Mali where we could just always talk and any questions I had, um, Mali could provide the answers. And I think that's actually quite unusual because I think usually an actor does, in terms of the character preparation, I think the actor is mostly a, a, a quite a, a sole job as in like just yourself. So to have Marley there who had such a specific idea, but at the same time gave you so much freedom to play um, and make up, make your own choices. It was, it was, it was a real treat actually. I don't know if I'll ever get that again. <laughs> and it seems like you had such an incredible fellow cast to work with this kind of, there's a bit of an ensemble cast kind of vibe going on and, I can sort of imagine you all, you have, must have had quite a laugh at that holiday park in caravans, um, all kind of working together. And there's, you know, it te does tease out all the different relationships, not just with this girl that she's got a crush on, but also her mum, her sister, um, yeah. brother-in-law. So, you know, what was it like working with them? Amazing, amazing. Cause you know, all the actors in the, on, on the cast were just so experienced. Um, you know, they, they, and I think just watching, um, Joe and Sophia and, and Samuel, like the way that they act and the way that they can improv and uh, how they just have this kind of calm, cool kind of attitude on set. Like uh, the same with Ella Ray. I mean, everyone, Spike, Stefan, I couldn't, I, Tabby. I mean, Tabby's done loads of stuff and she's 12 or whatever, you know, learned so much and Tabby, I was like, you're awesome. <laughs> Um, so yeah, a huge, a huge amount. That's not very specific. But sorry, I didn't think I keep really on there. But, but yeah, it was, it was just constant stimulation, like all the time. It was amazing. And what were some of the highs and lows? I mean, I can imagine like filming on a holiday park in the UK probably was had some chilly moments. And then you're also kind of, you know, having to really get into the costume with the bucket hat and the glasses. You know, what were some of the sort of like the highlights and challenges of playing the role and working on the set? Um, I think the highlights were, um, well, I think when you, sorry, just to specify uh, on you saying about playing the role, I, I think one of the highlights there is that it's just such a fun role to play. Yeah. And I think people often play roles that are so sort of close to themselves in a way. I mean, AJ is very close to me, like I, I in terms of my teenage years and um, my need to, 
stick out but then at the same time kind of hide I mean, I mean there's so many things that identify they do but the kind of extremeness of how she looks and behaves uh was just such a joy to to kind of wrestle with and try and get right and um that was a massive high I mean yeah I don't know if I'll ever get to play a part like that ever again it was amazing um and I don't I mean to be honest like I know everyone probably says stuff like this but there wasn't really any lows like <laughs> Um, it was all great because everyone was so nice and kind and, and um, on it. Um, I guess maybe we had to swim uh, in one scene, which they actually couldn't use in the end because the execs, I think, watched the playback. And like, it's a scene where Ella and um, Isla and AJ are like, like, you know, they like run into the water and mm. AJ is like, is it cold? Is the water cold? Um, and uh, we filmed, we actually filmed that scene twice. The first time was in this kind of quite stagnant, weird kind of pond behind the sea. It was like weird, it was a weird place. And um, it was so, so cold. And the execs were like, we can't use it because they just look cold. They don't look like they're having fun. <laughs> <laughs> it was actually freezing. Um, yeah. but, I mean, there wasn't even a low point. That was kind of just mm. a challenge, I think. Yeah. And of course, like in some respects, it is just, you know, a lot about kind of coming of age her as a character but there's obviously this other layer which is about kind of like representation of people you know from lgbtq backgrounds and especially in the modern age how, how will the impact on you know someone's family of like how do they come to terms with kind of what the, the, their child might be going through how important do you think it is to tell these stories and you know have you noticed that you've, some of the reactions to the film are for people just so glad that these stories are having more of a platform. Yeah, like I think I think the reason why Marley made it was so that young girls and um, I mean not just young girls, but particularly you know some because Marley never saw characters like that when she was growing up. All the characters she saw had stories rooted in trauma and death and like rejection and you know. So I think Marley wanted to make something where girls can look at it and go, oh, I see a character like me, and actually it doesn't have to end that way. Mm. Um, and so I think. I think that's why it's a great film because, and also it's not a coming out story, which I think is so refreshing. She's, mm -hmm. she's done that and the family accept that. It's not, I mean, obviously there's, a, there's a, some rocky moments where they say the wrong thing or they don't understand her, but there's no sort of real outward homophobia at all. Mm -hmm. And so I think a film like that is really important that it embraces the casualness and how that this is just life and, um, so, and yeah, we've had amazing, we've had absolutely amazing responses from a lot of young people actually, which has been lovely. Young girls that have come forward and said how much they've enjoyed it. And, um, you know, and, and people of all ages actually saying that they wish they'd seen the film when they were sort of 15 or, um, and, and that's kind of the best thing about it of all, I think. Mm. That's the best reward. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so, you know, is that what, what do you hope in general audiences will take away? Because I guess, you know, there's going to be a whole range of people watching this, you know, maybe other families, other mums, other sisters. So, you know, what do you hope that in general people would take away other than also just having having a laugh, you know, watching a, a, an entertaining film? Um, that's a good question. Um, what will people take away from it? Gosh, I don't know how equipped I am to answer that. Um, I think that... I think it I think it's to make people feel good and to make people feel I think I think what is the thing that Marley wanted to achieve is that for certain people to watch it and see parts of themselves in it mm -hmm. and to feel seen. So I think if if we can achieve that in anyone to feel seen, I think we've done that job. We mm -hmm. we've done our job. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think you've been working on some other bits and bobs, music videos, is that right? And some, you've got some other roles coming up. So maybe you can tell us a bit about that. Um, so, well, I just recently made a uh, short film slash music video for my friend, Ella Clayton, whose song is actually in Sweetheart. Um, it's called Only Bodies. It's a great song. Um, so it's a new music video for her, which we made earlier, uh, a couple of months ago. And it's all about vampires. Um, and it's about kind of, it plays on those ideas of kind of heartbreak and uh, disappointment, but in quite in a sort of absurd kind of fantastical way, because it's mm. all about vampires. Uh, and that makes it sound like it's crazy. It is crazy, but um, but yeah. And uh, I had a film come out in Cannes, uh, which is the uh, a new Ari Folman uh, animation called Where Is Anne Frank, uh, where I play a police officer in it. Um, and I'm super proud of that, because it's, again, it's for young audiences, it's for YA audiences, and it teaches, about the Holocaust and um, 
about kind of I guess it's sort of about displaced it's kind of it, it's set in the past but it's also set now and I think it shines a light now on displaced communities and, and the danger of when people kind of turn against uh, people that are different from themselves and um, it's really I'm so so proud of it actually like mm. that's one of my proudest pieces of work and I can't wait for people to see it. Mm. And you know after the pandemic and the lockdowns we've had how does it feel to be getting back I saw you guys had your preview mm -hmm. at the BFI and you know you've had like people coming uh, coming to the cinema and they're going to be seeing it in hopefully on the big screen so how does it feel for things to be kind of getting back to normal? It feels like weird it feels weird it, it was almost like it never like I think everything's just gone back to normality so quickly I know it's not obviously completely normal but it just feels like when where did the time go like I can't believe these two years have gone the way they have mm. um it, like it just everything has just sped up so quickly I mean the film was basically put on pause for like 18 months or whatever and um mm. I always just think thank god that we actually managed to make it I don't know if the film would have even been completed if we hadn't got it in the can before the pandemic hit so uh, mm. for that I, I think we all feel really grateful mm. and if anything now there's renewed appetite I think for, for mm. the arts for cinema so hopefully yeah. none of that's yeah. going anywhere <laughs> I know that everyone always wants to be entertained. That's one of the things that won't die. <laughs> well, I think um, I, I've taken up my time now, but it was such a pleasure to speak to you. Um, thanks so much for sharing all that with us. Best of luck with the release and uh, of your other projects as well. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Nell. Thanks a lot. Cheers. Bye.